This is Anson Kim in Seoul, Korea. Our cameraman is Steve Sin and our assistant is Bo Min Baek. I am here with Richard Pennington who is leading a campaign to get Ebona Haynes in the College Football Hall of Fame. Maybe you can start by telling us a little bit about Haynes. Okay. Well, Abner Haynes was born in Dallas, Texas in 1937. Uh, his main claim to fame is that he played football at North Texas State between 1956 and 1959. He, uh, he led North Texas in uh, rushing, receiving, uh, kick returns, punt returns, and interceptions all three years. He was a tremendous player, but he was also the first African-American player at an otherwise European-American school in the South. He led the integration process, the racial integration process for college football, and that is a very significant matter. And that is uh, really the main reason why I think he should be in the College Football Hall of Fame. Okay, but why is Haynes not in the College Football Hall of Fame? Well, there are two main reasons. Uh, it has to do with the rules of the National Football Foundation, which run the uh, College Football Hall of Fame. One is that a, uh, a player has to have been a first-team All-American, named first-team All-American by one of the five major listing services, and that his uh, college football career could have ended no more than 50 years ago. He finished playing in 1959, which means his uh, he's... He cannot be considered uh, for inclusion in the college football hang, for really for those two reasons. Okay, so should he have been a first team or Americans? I think he should have been, yes. Um, if, uh, if you look at his numbers compared to, to the other top running backs, especially in 1959, uh, it, it seemed clear to me he was, if not the best, then one of the best in the, in the game. And he should have been recognized for, as an All-American, possibly even a Heisman Trophy candidate. So why did Haynes go to North Texas State in 1956? Well, he went to North Texas in 56 because uh, he had so few options. The uh, racism was so predominant. Um, the schools of the Southwest Conference, they were not about to offer him a scholarship. He wanted to go to SMU. You know, SMU is in Dallas. He's a native of Dallas. Uh, he wrote a letter to Matty Bell, the athletic director at SMU, saying, please let me come play football for you. Uh, Bell wrote him back and said, no, thanks. We're not interested. Um, he also wrote a similar letter to Texas Tech, although they were not at that time a member of the Southwest Conference. Um, they were not going to integrate. Uh, they must have known. They must have known that uh, there were lots of great uh, potential uh, players, such as Haynes, who were available, but they were in uninterested in breaking the barrier, the racial barrier. And so somebody had to get this process started, and it was Abner Haynes. Okay, and what about the Southwest Conference schools and their so-called gentlemen's agreement? Oh yes, the gentlemen's agreement. That was where uh, they were. These guys, these administrators, the coaches, the people who ran the universities, they were more interested in maintaining the racial status quo than they were in certainly in social justice or uh, winning football games. If they wanted to win football games, they would have uh, recruited guys like Abner Haynes and and others who traveled out of state because they were not wanted in the South. Southwest Conference. That's why it's called the Gentleman's Agreement. They were not really gentlemen, it's an ironic term, uh, but they could have and they should have gone ahead and integrated, but they just waited and waited and waited. Okay, then uh, what kind of pro career did Haynes have? Okay, he was a fantastic pro player. He played for the Dallas Texans, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, Denver Broncos, um, Miami Dolphins and New York Jets, primarily with the Texans and the Chiefs. Uh, he, uh, he was the AFL Player of the Year in 1960, and he led the Texans to the 1962 AFL Championship. Um, Haynes was a very good pro football player, which I think validates his college career. Okay, and what do you think of the National Football Foundation's rule stating that a player must have been a first team or American to be eligible for the college football hall of fame? Well, I think it's, an, it's, a, it's very unfair. Uh, it's a blunt instrument mm -hmm. and the, uh, because obviously it favors some players and it disfavors others. It disfavors Haynes. Uh, at a school like North Texas, he wasn't going to get any first team All-American consideration no matter how good he was. Uh, so I think the National Football Foundation would be wise to consider exceptions to that rule. 
Mm, so, do you think will the National Football Foundation make an exception for Haynes? I regret to say, no. I don't think they're going to make an exception. Uh, there is something, however, called the Outstanding Contribution to Amateur Football Award, which is given by the National Football Foundation. And I have uh, basically nominated him to be a recipient of that award. I think he should receive that award. If he's not going to be admitted to the um, College Football Hall of Fame, this would be a fine uh, alternative. So, okay, so have you heard back from the National for foundation? Yes, I have. Uh, I've been in touch with Steve Hatchell, who is the, I believe he's the CEO and the president and CEO, something like that. He's the top guy at the National Football Foundation, and he's made clear to me that no, they're not going to uh, change the rules, no matter uh, what uh, how worthy Abner Haynes is, and, and so he's basically closed the door on that. Therefore, uh, I've come back to him with the, the suggestion that uh, the National Football Foundation consider Abner Haynes for this, uh, this award, which I just mentioned. What about Haynes? Are you in touch with Haynes? Yes, I am. I've been in touch with him. Uh, we've had some telephone conversations with both him and his two sons, Abner Jr. and King David, and all of them are very happy about this uh, little uh, campaign that's being run on behalf of uh, Abner Haynes and we all hope that uh, it will bear fruit. Mm. So any concluding words? Yes, I just would like to say that um, Abner Haynes has not gotten the recognition that I think he deserves both as a football player and as the man who got the uh, racial integration process going in the South and that he deserves that kind of uh, recognition. Okay, so thank you for uh, listening, and I think I agree that uh, Haynes should be in the College Football Hall of Fame.